Hi, I'm Calvin Gorey with Silicon Republic and today is day two of BT Young Scientist 2016. So we're here down at BT Young Scientist with John Huggard looking at pentaquarks and so John can you just tell us a little about what exactly got you interested you in pentaquarks in the project in the first place and kind of what you're hoping to achieve with it? Well pentaquarks were discovered quite recently on the 15th of July in 2015 and ever since then when they discovered this particle everyone's been saying why they found pentaquarks and why this is such a great discovery but no one was really arguing against the project and why it wasn't a pentaquark and why the particle could have been something that could be explained a lot more simply. So I, it's, I took my duty to explain why it wasn't actually a pentaquark. I've created different solutions and different models of what it could be and what the possibilities are. So it shows a pentaquark molecule, which is completely different to a pentaquark, as the baryon and meson are molecularly bounded instead of having the single particle. Well, there are a lot of problems with the theory of the discovery of the particle, such as it has a longer lifespan, as would have been expected, 10 to the minus 20 seconds. The energies were a bit higher than expected. And it's quite a heavy uh, particle as it has two charm quarks, the fourth heaviest quarks, at 1.27 uh, GeV of mass. So it's more likely that the pentaquarks would have actually been molecules instead of actually the full-on particle that CERN believes they have found. And I do want in the future to try and discover something like pentaquarks, because with pentaquarks you can discover many interesting things such as antimatter and supersymmetry using the antiparticles inside of it. Our project is associated with a project in our hometown moat there was an amusement park and a cycleway opening in Moat and we were involved in the preparation work, so cleaning up the roads, picking up plastic, all that kind of stuff. So we became aware of the growing problem of plastic waste in our environment. So we decided to look at different types of fungi that could maybe break down the plastic easily. So we looked at mushroom compost, a cheese and maltose solution and soil that we dug up from our school and we made the solutions and we left them for six weeks in our school and basically see if they would break down the plastic or not. And then we have our results there that a lot of them decrease minutely but um, we'd like to leave them a lot longer later on and see if they'd decrease more and then have a look and see like the soil decrease mainly the most in, out of all our samples. Uh, so we'd like to look and see if we can test what bacteria or fungi was present in our soil in our school, maybe if that had an effect on it or not. So Matthew, could you tell us a little about your concepts and what you think has been lacking in life support in space so far? Um, well, we're looking at a way of trying to make life support systems in space um, sustainable so that they can last on the spaceship and they don't have to be resupplied by shuttles from the ground as they are at the minute. Um, we were looking into reverse osmosis, um, a means of water recycling in space. Um, so we can improve on the plant systems for growing food. We can look at things like waste disposal, um, which are used for solar radiation protection um, and advancements like that. If our systems, they could sustain themselves without having to be resupplied constantly. And they, if something went wrong, they could um, recover and hopefully maintain the mission for a longer period of time. And do you think we could have this? We could have your systems on the Mars missions in 2030. <laughs> um, maybe if I grow a bit faster, we might reach developing something like that by this stage. NASA at the minute are developing systems like forward osmosis, which is slightly different. Um, things like the veggie experiment to try and see growing food quickly and with the limited space. Um, but something like this, I think, will inevitably have to happen. It's just too expensive for long periods of time to send up resource supply missions, etc., in the space.